The complexity of the eye is a common example used by creationists. An example that has been well refuted, Richard Dawkins has done this very well himself. Here are some videos of him showing how the stepwise process of evolution can produce the eye. They're found here on YouTube. To paraphrase Dawkins' refutation and maybe add a little bit to it. Evolution, being a stepwise process, does not need to produce an eye in only one or two steps. Evolution produced the eye in many steps, and many, if not all, of these steps are still found in animals today. They are even found in the fetal development of humans. The earliest predecessor of the eye, and still used in some organisms today, are the photoreceptor proteins. Even some single-celled organisms, like euglena, have these proteins. In multicellular organisms, like planarium, which has a very good example of one, the most basic type of eye is the pit eye. It is nothing more than a pit with photosensitive cells in it. It can determine directionality of a light source, but not much else. And on up we can go, through the mollusk, which actually have a large range of eyes, from the most primitive to the most complex, rivaling even the human eye, and on and on through other organisms containing more and more complex types of eyes. The evolutionary steps that are needed to produce an eye are very easy to imagine, and it is easy to find real-world counterparts of these basic eye types in currently living animals. Creationists only make such a claim about the eye being too complex for one of two reasons. Either they are not sufficiently educated in regards to the theory of evolution, or they lie about it to bolster their position. The geological column and upright fossils. Geologists know not all geological features are formed over long periods of time. Local flood events can lead to large depositions of sediment and mass grave sites. These events are seen occurring today. The fossil trees mentioned are examples of trees covered by a singular event, not a Noetian flood, but a local flood. Many geological features can form quickly due to volcanoes, landslides, flooding, etc. Such events can be recognized by the type and organization of the strata and are not confused with strata that have taken a very long time to form. Other geological features, such as the massive limestone deposits around the world, could only have formed over a very long time. Limestone is composed primarily of calcite, aka calcium carbonate. The formation of calcite in limestone is an exothermic chemical process, i.e. heat is produced. If the limestone formations were all laid down by a global flood, the heat they would have produced would have been so great as to sterilize the planet. The polystrate trees that Halvind and other creationists have used are the result of local flooding events, just like what is seen today. We know that such flooding occurs today and that partially submerged trees continue to live. This rapid localized sedimentation is expected and is also recognizable by geologists. As for the whale, it was not in a vertical stance. It was between 40 and 50 degrees off the vertical and oriented parallel to the strata it was found in. The strata itself had been uplifted via geological processes. It is almost needless to say the geological column has been observed and examined now for several hundred years. Geologists know what kind of deposition could have been formed quickly and what kind of depositions could not have been formed quickly. They recognize this, even when the creationists attempt to muddy the facts. Cells. Cells are small and complex. But to think that we do not know about them and cannot observe and learn more about them is to ignore all the technology that we have developed that allows us to examine and learn about cells and to ignore all the knowledge we have in regards to cells. Here's a list of structures that we know about in regards to cells. We'll start with the basic cells, the prokaryotic cells. They start with a cell wall composed of a peptoglycan they continue to through to a plasma membrane composed of a phospholipid bilayer, cytoplasm containing organelles and inclusions, and then the nucleoid which contains the DNA of the cell. Next, we'll deal with the eukaryotic cells. They have a cell membrane 
composed of phospholipid bilayers. They have cytoskeleton, composed of a protein as the scaffolding for the cell. They have cytoplasm, which contains organelles. These organelles are the ribosome, which is for protein synthesis. Vesicles, which generally carry, are the cargo carriers of the cells. Mitochondria, which is the powerhouse and produces ATP. And the vacuoles, which have many functions, including removal of structural debris, isolating harmful materials, containing waste products, maintaining hydrostatic pressure, maintaining pH, storing small molecules, and the removal of unwanted substances from the cell. Then there is the centrosome and the centrals, which are there for uh, the reproduction of the cell during mitosis. Moving on into the cell, we have the rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The rough generally synthesizes proteins. It is where many ribosomes are held. The smooth deals with metabolism and limpid synthesis. Continuing on, we have the nucleus, which is the location of the DNA that stores the instructions for organisms. We have the nucleolus. It's the location where there are DNA transcription takes place. We know so much about cells that now we are nearly able to produce synthetic cells from scratch. I have put a link to the right uh, to an article that covers this. We are now capable of rewriting the very instructions of life, the DNA. We have gotten so good at this that we can even now make bacteria that are capable of producing hydrocarbons like gasoline directly through a form of fermentation. Hopefully this may solve our energy crisis. So, Kuhnkiller92, you need to research the sciences. There is much there you do not know, and you cannot attack a scientific position such as the theory of evolution without knowing these things. You feel that the world had to have been created. That's fine. I have no problem with that. But if there is a god, that god used natural processes that science can examine, and that god used the process of evolution. The only problem I have with creationists is that they are unwilling to accept verified and verifiable data because it contradicts their dogma. They are so concerned over what science has discovered that they, misre they misrepresent it and they lie in attempt to bolster their claims. Look into the science and then compare it to the dogma of creationism, but to simply ignore the science because you don't want it to be what it is or because it threatens your faith and an idea does not help support your claims. Indeed, ignorance in science will only lead to the destruction of your claims because you will make claims in regards to science that are not science. You will inadvertently be creating straw men arguments that have nothing to do with the topics you wish to discuss or criticize. Know the science then speak on it. If you don't, nothing you say will really be of any value.